Hmm. My steak spice lasted me a long time, but I feel like that I'm gonna have to get a refill for it because it's getting close to the bottom of it. Oh well, when there's a spice that's done really well like that, you are gonna make it use make use of it for time to time. So welcome to another edition of the Wananuki Cheese Cafe. So I've had a few episodes where I put together some random spice mixes. And if you recall one of my last ones, I did do this over here, my own homemade curry powder, which is actually pretty straightforward if you have a lot of the uh, seasonings in your pantry. If you missed that one, here's my suggestion. Go click on the link on the top right corner and you can revisit that one because it's a pretty recent one. So we did that. I've also shown you obviously the uh, steak spice that's uh, disappearing right now. I've also done Greek salad seasoning, but there's another one that kind of intrigued me that I was looking in store once and was looking at the ingredients, I thought, Wait, that's it? It's a uh, Herbe de Provence. It's a very nice French savory uh, seasoning that you find in stores. And I might have seen that a few times in the restaurants, but when I looked it up, I thought, there's actually a lot of this stuff that if you have a well-equipped spice rack, you can put it together yourself. And we're gonna be doing that today on this next episode. But before we continue with that, here's my suggestion. Hit that subscribe button below and put your notification bell on. That way, if you have a, <coughs> excuse me, that way, if you have a new video that's ready for viewing, there's gonna be a pop-up on your phone. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, even if you haven't watched anything yet, because the more likes this gets, the more the episode is promoted on YouTube. So you're helping me more than you think. Let's get right on to the spice mix. So, Herbe de Provence, everything that I've read about that, um, it seems like it's a kind of spice mix that originates from the southern region of France. And it's pretty popular over there where you could put it into certain kinds of salads. You could put it with meat like chicken, you could dress it on fish, and a whole bunch of stuff too. From what I've read, because I've read about it a little bit, it seemed like that it was pretty common in some French dishes. But if you're looking at it from a North American perspective, it really only started to get prominence in the 1960s and in the 1970s when it was starting to get imported here. <coughs> and you had chefs on cooking shows who were talking about French cooking and showing it off to, I guess, an American mainstream audience for the first time. In my case, I have feel like that, my grammar's kind of off. I feel like that I've seen that kind of recipe or like that kind of spice uh, mix on a few dishes when I go to restaurants, but I never really thought about making it myself or buying it because I didn't know too much about it. And then when I looked in the store, saw like a random uh, pre-made mix, I thought, wait, that's it? Yet another case of I've already got some of the stuff in my pantry with a few things that uh, I needed to buy for a good measure. So <coughs> we're gonna be doing this today. Oh yeah. And just gonna put this as a disclaimer too. Yes, there's gonna be a few people out there who are probably gonna comment, look at what I'm doing and say, hey, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to do it this way. Truth be told, that's the beauty of a homemade spice mix. You can dress up all you want. You can put the quantities that you want and readjust depending on your liking. So now that I got that out of the way, what I'm doing here is I'm getting a pack of rosemary open up and I'm gonna put that in uh, my mortar and pestle. It's gonna be around two tablespoons worth. So rosemary is another uh, spice or herb that I don't really use very often. I feel like whoop, this thing isn't opening up properly for me. Here, round two. This is the first time I've bought this brand of spices and it feels like I'm having a little bit of trouble opening it up. <laughs> okay. So yeah, rosemary I don't use very often. I think the best example that I have for it is that I've used it for my honey butter pork roast that I've done a while back. Oh yeah, if you want to see that then click on the link on the top right corner to watch that because that's a relative early day of the channel when I was just mostly doing cooking episodes before wanting the streets a lot more. So, two tablespoons worth. And it has a very pleasing smell, I have to say. And the reason I'm putting this in a mortar and pestle is because, well, if you take a look at this, you got these little kind of grains of uh, rosemary leaves. When you dry them out, they get really 
like you try to chew on this, it's gonna get caught between your teeth and it's gonna drive you crazy. So for all intents and purposes, this is one of those that I'm just gonna kind of grind up in the mortar and pestle to make it easier and more manipulative to Okay, this is as mixed as well as it's gonna get. So to recap, if you're looking at rosemary, you're gonna be looking at something that looks like this, which are these little twigs. But then after working in the mortar and pestle, it does come out a little bit more powdery, so then you're easier to work with. So once you get that all done, you're just gonna transport that into a small jar like this. And then hope that, you know, nothing falls over. So actually this is a little bit easier to see. When you look on camera, you can tell that it's a bit more powdery. There are some twigs still left in here, but it's almost minimal now compared to what it was before. So what's the next thing I'm gonna be doing? Ooh. Something brand new, fennel seeds. This is another one of those ingredients that I don't think I really like used in any of my cooking before. And I don't think I've ever bought it or had much experience with it, but it's gonna be a first time for everything. Now, because it's seeds that I'm working with, I am gonna have to use a mortar and pestle for this as well. And hope I can open this as well. Uh, okay. So, tablespoon once again. That's the beauty of this, is that every recipe that I've seen or variation, most of it's gonna involve serving things in a tablespoon, give or take. If you're doing this with a teaspoon, you're probably only doing this to fill up a fraction of the quantity but if you want to do this in bulk, then tablespoon is all the way. Very similar to what I did with my Montreal steak spice I did a while back. And I guess for good measure, if you want to see that too, you know what to do. Cards on the top right corner, click that. But be sure to come back to this episode so we can watch the rest of this. So what is this stuff anyways? Ooh. Fennel? I wish I could tell you a little bit more about this, but I really don't use this much in my cooking. And the scent and the flavor feels like a mystery. Well, maybe they can uh, describe it on this package. Whole grain fennel seeds, quality spices, may contain tree nuts, peanuts, sesame seeds, soy, wheat, milk, eggs, sulfites, and mustard. Oh, <coughs> so I suppose this is a disclaimer in case you have any allergies. So offer your allergies one ingredient at a time. Not exactly what I'm talking about, but classic Genesis album. <laughs> okay, so after having a few minutes to grind this up well, I think I can put my finger on what exactly this smells like. It almost smells a little bit like black licorice, like, you know, black licorice, uh, Twizzlers you can find, maybe there's black licorice balls that you can get in some candy stores, and depending on your uh, style of drink, it could remind me a little bit of Pastis de Marseille, or heaven forbid you want to get some absinthe at an absinthe bar, but good luck with that, and you know, make sure you have enough coffee after you're done that. So, most of this is ground up too, which means I can add this into the jar. There we go, and now this mortar and pestle can be kept aside. Oh yeah, just in case you don't have one of those uh, contraptions, which is pretty simple to have, there is another option in case you want to grind up your spices. If you have a coffee grinder where you like to grind your own beans, there is a setting on there, or at least it shows a level where you could put spices in there and you could grind it up because coffee grinders also act as a spice grinder. So something to keep in mind if you have that. If not, well, I guess maybe if you don't have either of them, you could use the food processor and maybe especially a small one. I don't know, it's all up to you. But we're gonna be moving on to the next step, which is, ah, thyme. So we got some uh, dry thyme here and I'm gonna use about two tablespoons worth. Ooh. This is a smell that goes really well with pork and a lot of meats, but it also has a bit of a minty smell. I kinda like it. I'd like to use it for some of my spice blends as opposed to just using thyme, but it gets its job done. And no, 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 I'm not out of time. I'm not out of time. 
that would be implying that this bag is running empty because of my spice mix and the fact that I'm apparently a blue hedgehog. <sighs> Damn editor. So what would be the next thing I could use? Um, oh, I guess I could use some oregano also. One tablespoon worth at the same time. And that meow I heard, that's Felix. I think he's asking for attention now. So one tablespoon as well. And then keep this aside as well. I try not to use the word as well. And don't offend the cat either. <laughs> what else can I use too? Well, well, let's try something brand new. Savory. The second of the spices that I don't think I've ever tried before or don't think I've bought. So i am really just bought this for this recipe in particular. Oh, two tablespoons worth. I guess I am kind of curious to see what this one smells like. So you're going to get my initial reaction right on camera. And... Meow. Hmm. And it smells like... I actually don't know. Man, I'm actually at a loss for that. Either way, we're going to do two tablespoons worth of this. Now, obviously, if you're watching this and you're kind of questioning, nothing of this is an act actual science, like I said. You go with what you feel like is a best blend, and if it works, great. If not, you can adjust it depending on your liking. Um, what am I going to do now? Ooh. Two tablespoons of dry marjoram. Why not? So marjoram is another one, one of those things that I've used before, but really the only purpose I have it for is when I'm putting together my Greek salad seasonings mix. And once again, top right corner of you to watch that one, which I did like, oh, I think I recorded that one almost two years ago. I'd ask where does the time go, but we already know that. Time waits for no one, and it won't wait for me. And it won't wait for any meowy cats. We got that. I seem to remember a few recipes, or like one of the packages in store that says they use sage. And I don't know if I should use it or not. Or actually I didn't know, but I figured this is one season I had sitting in my pantry for a while, so maybe this will give me a good excuse to, you know, whip it out. So I'm gonna do also a, tea, a tablespoon of this. Nice scent. We'll see how that mixes in. Then maybe the last one I'm going to do is tarragon. Tarragon apparently has a very distinct flavor. I don't really use it in my cooking either. And again, I bought this one just for the uh, recipe. But I think I remember there was one episode that my mom used to watch of Everybody Loves Raymond where I think it was some kind of a dish that was made which by a raise a mom. Seemed like it wasn't as well, but the reason is that she used tarragon as one of the spices instead. So that's my only experience uh, with that on the camera, or at least with the uh, knowledge. I mean, it seems all right. It smells okay. Scent, that's gonna be dependent on a lot of things. Now, you know what? Let's just go all out and do one last ingredient. One tablespoon of basil. I don't know if you really need this here, because I got a lot of the key ingredients, but you can make a lot of variations of this depending on what's in your pantry or I guess where you're from. There's also a Mediterranean mix that you could do of this, but then there's also, um, well, the traditional French one, and there's even some American things that you can do. Because apparently some recipes I saw could call for parsley or even lavender of all things. Like, that kind of felt crazy. But you gotta adapt to every market that you're in. And anyways, that's everything I'm gonna need in here. So once you have all of that combined into the jar, just put it in. And then just like my curry, you're gonna notice that all the ground seasoning at the bottom is sinking there, and then the rest of it's all on top. But what I'm gonna do is give this a really good shake, and then just blend it all in. Give it like less than a minute and you won't even know you have a layer upon layer of spice. Let's get all theatrical for the camera. 
There, so that's all blended in. Ooh. Very nice uh, blending. It's too bad that I've already had supper because I would actually be curious to see how this turns out on food. But I suppose my next cooking episode, I could figure out how I could use it. So there you have it. Something from the south of France, captured on the channel and very simple to make if you use a lot of these spices at home. So you wouldn't have to buy the store-bought one. You can adjust it to all your flavorings depending on your cooking. So everyone, <coughs> Thanks for watching this latest edition of the Wananuki Cheese Cafe. Once again, if you like what you see, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my antics. And if you have an idea for any future episodes, leave in the comment section. I'll see what I could do. Till then, take care and see you next time. And hopefully on the next cooking episode, I get to put this to use. Nope. If I was crazy enough and I really want to try this, I could just take a spoonful and eat that. I mean, I was a kid, I used to eat icing sugar out of a bowl because I was uh, six years old, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs>